as far as you know, his, the threat that he poses has now been averted, right? Right. <laughs> what? <laughs> you sound like Tony the Tiger here. <laughs> Sorry. Oh. Yeah. Uh, we go back to uh, Luke, the ninth chapter. Where's my head? Don't lose your head. The ninth chapter. It says, and Herod said, John, have I beheaded? But who is this? of whom I hear such things. And he desired to see him. He said, you know, I gotta see who's doing this thing. In my kingdom. <laughs> my, my kingdom. Right? He said, I wanna meet with him. I wanna have a meeting with him. Sit down. Verse 10. And he and the apostle, Parley. when they were returned, told him all that they had done. And he took and he took them and went aside privately into a desert place belonging to the city called Bethsaida. And the people and the people, when they knew it, followed him, and he received them and spake unto them of the kingdom of the Mosai, and healed them that had need of healing. So first he teach them about the kingdom of the Mosai. And then he healed them, right? He did a, a, other miracles there. And when the day began to wear away, then came the twelve and said unto him, Send the multitude away, that they may go into the town and country around about. So when the day was about to be over. Not 12 midnight. That's Yahusha right there. He said, when the day is about to go away. You know, a day begins over here at 12 midnight. Oops. So, the day is about to be over, so he's sending them away. We're going to read on. Send the multitude away that they may go into the town and countries right about and lodge and get victuals, for we are here in a desert place. So it says, just send them out, because a bunch, a lot of people have been following us. Now send them to get food, because we're in a desert now. Right? But he said unto them, give ye them to eat. Right? Now the disciples like, yo, it's cat wild and yo. Right. <laughs> what? So I'm waiting for Peter to jump up. <laughs> <laughs> but you just told us not to bring anything with us. Like, what? <laughs> right. They <laughs> say, yeah, yeah, we in a desert place. Okay? <laughs> but he said unto unto them, give ye to them to eat. And they said, We have no more but five loaves and two fishes. Except we should go and buy meat for all his people. For they were about 5,000 5, men. And he said to his disciple, Make them sit down by fifties in a company. So he said, Except we just go and buy food for all these people. Because you, you should see how they, <laughs> how they say, Yeah, we got to buy food for all these people. <laughs> <laughs> Right? And he said, and you the one who say don't make money. Right? <laughs> <laughs> right? For all these people. For because they were about five thousand men. And he said to his disciple, make them sit down by fifties in a company. So he said, divide them into fifties and lot a lot of fifties. Let them make them sit down. And divide them into a lot of fifties. Divide them into legions. Yeah, legions of fifties. <laughs> kind of, it's, it reminds me of um, Old Testament once again. Remember, because uh, you read about that during the time of the Maccabees when uh, Judas was ordering his army. He had them uh, grouped by fifties and by hundreds, and captains over a thousand. And then uh, Moses did the same thing. When we were in the wilderness, as far right. as grouping up the elders and having uh, captains, because because Jethro was talking to him like, "Yo, why are you trying to judge every situation they bring to you? Like it's too much for you." Like, why don't you have men who are able to de handle smaller cases to rule over those smaller cases? Have you know, men be set up over, you know, over 10, over 50, over 100, over 1,000, and 
the big case had them bring it to use. That was right. like a, a basic basic government structure we had set up in the wilderness right. to handle you know situations that came up. Right. So again, it says um, I'm just yeah. I'm just making the number to the re reference to the number. That's all. Go ahead. So now we have five thousand people, Perfect. right? Numbers. We have five thousand people, and they're in a the they're in a desert place, right? And the disciples, I got my bread. You know, send them away because we don't want to start eating in front of them. You know, send them away. <laughs> Send them away, cause you know so we ain't got that much food, man. Oh, that, that bread looks really yeah. good. That bread looks real right, good. Yeah, how a compassionate man? He don't see him sending all these people away. Mostly, they probably didn't have money to begin with, right? Oh, numbers thing, real quick. Five loaves and two fishes. Five plus two is seven. I'm just saying. I don't know. Little Milani do that too. Two and five, seven. Yeah. For they were about 5,000 men, and he <laughs> said to his disciples, make no, them sit do down by 50 do five by in a company. 15. And they did so. Righteous and numbers. made them all sit down in groups, right, as a family. Not just, you know, I'm going to hand each individual here one, each individual. He made them sit in group, right? And um, then he took the five loaves and the two fishes and looking upon looking looking up to heaven he blessed them and break and gave to the disciples to set before the multitude I said now you got jobs to do All right so I did my part I got the food now you know distribute the food now Right, it says, and they they did eat and were all filled. And there was taken up of fragments that remained that remained to them twelve baskets. Right? There were twelve baskets of residue of food left after five thousand people eat of a five loaf of and two fishes. Call that a miracle. That's amazing. And it's uh, it's funny. Twelve That's baskets. Possible. It's like, is your basket? Is your basket? <laughs> he goes down the list. All the twelve disciples. Is your basket? Is your. So that's what miracles are made of. Baskets, right? Nah. It's like you have miracles whenever Fail. there's like impossibles. That's what miracles is. So that's what's happening here. People don't realize miracles. It's like. Like you said, it's the whole point of miracles. Like, it's going against nature. What would it normally be? That's the whole point. The most high strength. Yeah, I set things in motion according to nature, according to my natural laws, but now, in the, all the power that I have, I can break those rules whenever I want. Go ahead. Because I'm the most high. I can do that. Son. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Get on my level, right? Mm -hmm. And again, 5,000 people to fishes, five loaves of bread. Do the math. Oh, I can't. <laughs> How do you do that? Think about that. There's another gospel where it says, um, I think it says, besides women and children. And you're reading another gospel, so it was actually more than 5,000 men. Right. Even more than that. But once again, is there anything too hard for the most So high? guess what? They had a lot of fighters. Right, guess what? The devil cannot explain this to his people, and they're not gonna get it. This is to, this is for those people. This is fairy tales. Mm -hmm. mm. I mean, I mean, that's good. I mean, they got they, they got the, the fish and the, uh, and the bread from Yahweh Shai. You know, the, you need to read about them getting it from no Chinese place. That's awesome. I mean, to me, I understand if they read this and say, "Oh, this is fairy tale." Nothing you say. What's holding up the earth? <laughs> it just it's just flowing. Like 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 the scripture we read uh, a couple of weeks ago. He's, uh, he hung the earth from nothing. nothing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or nothing. Like, or nothing. It's nothing. Is something? <laughs> if you if cool. you if you could if you could the earth doesn't strain to grow. I mean everything happened naturally in nature the way it's supposed to. 
You see all the evidence in front of you, but you can't believe this. Well, <laughs> they don't know what you mean. <laughs> <laughs> but you know you mean? the parable of the sower and the seed, man. The word just fall by the wayside. And it came to pass, as he was alone praying, his disciples were with him. And he asked them, saying, Whom say the people that I am? And it was like, Who did you tell the people that There's I am? Boy. Right? That's your man. That's your man. They answered and said, John the Baptist. But some say, Elias. And others say that one of the old prophets is risen again. So this is what, you know, who the people say I am. And he said unto them, But whom say ye that I am? <laughs> so now the people asking all this question, now I'm going to ask you. What do you think? Hey, go Peter again. I told you, boy. That's <laughs> your boy. <laughs> Peter answered and said, "That's my boy. That's my man. Right the Christ of God, the the Christ of God." And he straightly charged them and commanded them to tell no man that thing. Right? He said to tell no man that thing. So, see, he got the thingy in it. <laughs> that was for you, brother. Yeah, don't tell the man that thing. Right? Saying the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected of the elders and chief priests, the high priests, and scribes, the scribes of the people that you know that write, right? And be slain and be raised the third day. Alright? And he said to them. And he said to them all, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. So check this out. Check this out, right? It says, For whosoever will save his life shall lose, shall lose it. But whosoever will lose his life for my sake, the, shame, the same Shall save it. Check this out. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. But whosoever will lose his life for my sake, the same shall save it. So that's a parable right there. How do you lose your life? I mean, how do you save? He said, whosoever will save his life shall lose it. Anybody? Oh. Cool. It's like um, January, I mean, dang. Uh, Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 9, when it says that your heart is deceitful and desperately to do wicked, it's letting us know that our lives that we know of right now as we walk in darkness, you know, if we choose to save our own lives, you know, be in our own way, do our own thing, in the, our own way of thinking and, and, the, and the thinkies with our mind and our, and our heart and stuff, that uh, we're going to be condemned for that. Now, if we lose our life, give up our way of what we used to do, give up our way of... Um, uh, the wickedness that we that we did and stuff like that, and choose to lose all of our lives, all, all what we thought was life, then we can gain His life. It's all you no know, switching breaths. You know, we have uh, breathed the breath of death, and now it's time to breathe us the breath of life. So that what we consider life, and when we was in the world, what we consider life mm -hmm. is not this is it was actually death, and what we consider death is actually life. So therefore, we really don't own our life. He he does. Yahweh does. Okay. Let's just say that um. Uh, we never. We were discussing earlier. We never really dies. I mean, even though we die, 